lever. We'll just do uh, this is a fundamental class, and the rest of the lever can be pretty complicated. But I'll just show like the main use you'll have for it, uh, and then I'll show you one thing that's a little bit more fancy. Too, okay. Uh, so reverse de la Hiva means when Dave's going to do a knee through like this uh, to pass my guard, like so, um, what he wants is to get into this space here. If he can get his knee or his body here, he's past my, my legs. So I want to make sure I'm eliminating the chance of Dave uh, taking that space. So what I want to do is I want to pull my leg in really tight and hook his knee. And I want to, so let's this, this cut a lot of that space out. And I also want to take my arm underneath like that. So there's literally nowhere for his knee to go. Yeah? So if, we go, if Dave goes again, I want to use my right foot to hook like this. And I want to put my arm underneath like that. Try and put your knee to the mat, Dave. Yeah? Can you see how, how that works? If they go so far forward, that's actually good. That'll give you a, a sweep. So they're really trying to like pin their knee like down here and you're making that really hard. So as a warm up drill for this, Dave's gonna walk in to go for a cross knee through. So his right knee is gonna come across to my right leg. Yes, yeah? so remember it's opposite leg. That knee's gonna start coming down. He's gonna try and put it to the mat, like that. If he gets it to the mat, I stuffed up. As he goes to do that, I just bring my hook in and bring my arm underneath, like that. He's gonna go back, he's gonna go the other side. I go like this, get my arm underneath. So we're just going to go left and right with this. Just remember this hook has to, you want to like curl your toes underneath the thigh like that. If the person on top's not trying to do a knee through, uh, for some reason when I've taught this before, some people kind of stand like that and it'll feel really weird for me to do reverse del heba, but I wouldn't do it if he's not actually trying to knee through. Okay, so the person on top has to be trying to put their knee down to the mat. Okay, so we're just going to go like that, arm's going to come in, just have your other hand as if it was blocking so they can't grab your, your head too easily, come back, other side, hook in, like so, let's just do one minute of that and then we'll get into some proper technique from there, three, two, one, it's, people seem to be doing this, like, like, you don't need to like that, you never put your leg where they can just grab, okay, so when you need to, you have to like, be on your own, Balance and like here, where you can't grab my leg, I'm quite well centered. It gives him the reverse de la Hiva, but if I'm not doing that right, everything else will, will not work right either. So if you're on top and you're going like this, like nothing will look good, uh, <laughs> but it wouldn't work. So do the thing that would, would work. Okay, so let's now switch it up. Uh, we're going to just try and recover our guard using reverse de la Hiva now. So, it's important, there's quite a few things that are really important to do to get this to work. Dave's going to come through for the knee through. So I'm going to get that hook, like that. I've buried my arm underneath too, so there's no space. Uh, really important that I want to get my left foot in to start pushing him away. If Dave stays this close to me, when I try and recover my guard, like, I end up, like when, I when I take my leg out, I end up losing the position. He just comes closer again. So the main thing that's actually going to make space is my left foot. It's going to be either on the hip or the shoulder, and I don't really mind uh, which one you get. Uh, that said, I, like you can you can prefer either, but I think you will get a little bit better uh, distance making if you put it on the hip, where you can really push them away like that. Have a look now. Now that I've pushed him away with my leg, my right leg can come out, and he's not going to pass that that leg easily. If he was in close, and I take that leg out. You'll beat it, okay? All right, but that's just one part of it. I really don't want to let Dave grab my head. So if I've got this guard, this is like the best way of beating the reverse del is if they get a cross face. Now he's pretty much either in half guard or he's gonna knee through me. So I have to make sure I'm blocking that. And you've got two conflicting things here, because one is that my, my right arm wants to like stay tight. You can even grab the leg like that. But I also need to be blocking the arm from grabbing my, my head. So you have to kind of feel it out here. Sometimes you'll actually use that arm to grab their sleeve. And once you've got their sleeve, you'll tuck your arm underneath. Like that. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You shouldn't be able to cross face me when I'm holding that arm like that. So we'll work that today because I think that's the best possible scenario. 
That bear's going to come in for the knee through. I'm going to hook. This foot's going to go on the hip. The other hand's going to grab the sleeve, punch it under my leg. And I'm going to grab the other collar like that. So try and move away from me, Dave. It's hard for him to move away, and it's hard for him to drive in. I've got things that are making distance. I've got things that are pulling him in. So I get to choose which way he goes now. All right, but all I'm going to do from here, I'm going to extend my left leg like that, put my right foot on the hip like that, and I'm going to lift my hips up in the air and then square up. Like so, yep. Now I've got open guard. If you want, you can start trying to like lift and sweep, or you can just pull them in to close guard. Right, again, Dave comes in, hook, foot on the hip, grab the arm, grab the collar near the shoulder like this. Punch their arm so that your arm goes underneath. Imagine you're trying to make no space here. From there, kick with your left leg, foot goes across. Don't try and get guard here, you won't work. You need to lift your hips and square up. And then you can pull them in. Okay? One more time. Today's going to come in for the knee cut again. I get my reverse del heaver hook here, like this, and my left foot goes on the hip. I get my grips. So let's talk about the grips a bit more now, because I think it's really important to get this right if you want to, if you want to recover into a good spot. Okay, so this left hand has two roles. The left hand wants to be able to pull Dave in really tight, so I want to be able to like break his posture really good but I also want to be able to stop him from coming in too close. So uh, let's just say, for example, I wasn't holding there. If Dave brought his head pretty much to my head here, like I'm starting to get into a bad spot. I don't know if you can see that. It's gonna be really hard for me to recover my guard now, even if I've got this sleeve. So when you grip this collar, like get it deep, but pull down so you can actually like punch into the collarbone. So try and drive your shoulder into me now, Dave. All I have to do is straighten that arm, and I'm blocking him, but also try and move away from me. I can pull him in too. So I can keep him in a distance that I feel is comfortable. At the moment, it's pretty much just a block that I want when I've got the reverse de la Hever in. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to kick away, foot goes on the hip. And as soon as I start to square my hips up, the pull becomes really important. So I square up and I want to be like pulling my elbow down towards my hip. Here like that. You can already see, I'm starting to pull his shoulder right into pretty much where my belt is. Like that. I can push away, kick my leg through and then step on the top of his back, like that. When you step on the back, put your knee in, and that's gonna hold their shoulder down. So I'm pulling on the collar, and I'm, I'm, I'm driving with my knee here. Try and posture up, Dave. It should be pretty hard, okay? If you try and omoplata like this, posture up, Dave. If I don't hold the collar properly, if I'm like here, posture up is gonna be even easier. So uh, I want the two things working really hard to keep his shoulder down. One is my uh, left hand rowing towards my hip, like that, and the other is my knee pinching tight, like that. I'm going to scoot away until his shoulder's down towards the mat, and I can swing my legs over and start to go to the elbow finish. Don't worry too much about all the details for finishing the elbow platter. Uh, I'll make it very simple. Um, so, we'll start from that, just stand up. So we, we kind of end here where both our feet are on the hips. I'm going to pull down towards my hip. I want to kick through and step on the back so I can drive my knee onto his shoulder like that. Pinch my knees together and get his shoulder to the mat. All I want to try and do now, if you think of it like this, I'm trying to get my feet to face the other way. So I kind of sit up, grab the hip, and I windshield wipe my feet the other way, like this. I can't come forward when my leg's in the way, so I need to make sure both feet are out. Side. Now I can bring my hips up and apply pressure to the shoulder. So if my feet are here, I can't get my hips up. I need to actually move them out of the way so I can drive forward and rotate the shoulder. Do it all again. Dave goes to pass and get the reverse delta heaver hook, put on the hip, collar, just in front of the, the collarbone here, like this. I grab the wrist, I punch it down, I push away, foot goes on the hip. And I square up. From here, pull down nice and hard with that left foot, kick, stomp, and pinch my knees together like that. I shoot away a little bit, grab the hip, and then I want to swing my feet to the other side. 
like that. Come back, and we can sit up. Aww. If you find it hard to get your legs out, sorry, if you find it hard to get your legs out from here, like scoot away a little more, bring them down a bit further. It's usually easier to swing your legs. At what point is it okay to let go of the collar? Only when they're fully collapsed, or as soon as your legs are over? Yeah, I think when you feel it? like when you feel you're ready to bring your legs over, that's okay. Then you can let go. Yeah. Like, what if they posture up after you've brought your legs over? It's really hard. You, you want it to let go like, so we're here, I'm pulling down, I kick through, I'm going to go like this. Like, now that his shoulder's down, I could let go and it's going to be pretty hard for, for Dave to recover from that. And I start to scoot and pull. Uh, yeah. But I won't let go, I feel like he's got a chance of posturing up. Alright, let's have a go at that.